Junk. Welcome to this edition of Trash Compactor. In this episode, I'm going to be making a custom Mandalorian IG 11. For this build, I'm going to be using a vintage IG 88. He's a bit knackered, and the plan is what I'm going to do is use this figure and make him a bit like the figures you get from the Clone Wars where it's got flexible parts. I'm not going to utilise the arms of the legs. I could do, or I could customise these figures that I've got. Um, give him a little bit more mobility. But the bit I'm interested in is the waist. Because that's the one thing that the IG-88 doesn't do. Is he doesn't turn in the middle. And I want my IG-11 to be an act the way it does in the Mandalorian. Where its body swizzles and turns. I could utilise the arms and legs of this figure, they're of similar scales but what I'm going to do is I'm going to save those parts for doing the ferry droid at a later date and focus on the IG-88. So to make the swivel part I'm going to be using the Lego pieces so this is almost like a socket bit that you get on the trailer to pull something along and the idea is I'm going to use one part in the bottom and one part in the top. I'm going to be cutting my IG-88 down the middle. Now don't do this to good quality vintage figures, it's just this one's very loose and it looks better quality in the video but in reality it is a bit of a mess. I tried to do this with my Stanley blade uh, which actually didn't work and then I got a mini hacksaw and started cutting. Don't have to be perfectly neat with this but the key thing is you've just got to get it in the right part of the body because you don't want to hit the leg joints and you don't want to go too far up because then you muck up the bandolier. Could have done it higher, but there we are. Or just get a lightsaber and chop through the middle of the figure so it's quicker that way. So using my Stanley knife, just tidying up all the bits where I cut it off with the saw. I'm going to get some sandpaper just to knead it up because I want the joists to be nice and smooth so um, they don't rub. They don't just literally put it on the sandpaper, give it a good spin round, making sure you keep it nice and level. Again, using my Stanley knife literally just to tidy up the particles and the plastic feathering that you get from when you sand. Because I've cut the plastic and it has feathered, I'm just going to use my plastic weld, as I have done on previous builds, and just paint that around the feathered plastic just to neaten it all up and smooth it down. It tends to help and make the f edges of the figure just a little bit smoother. And you can see that's where it's going to swivel. Using the Lego joint, what I want to do is be able to trim the Lego joint down and the idea is to put one in the bottom half and one in the top so they fit together. So I just need to work out how far down it needs to go. Now by using the piece of Lego that's got the bobble on the end it actually fits into the bottom quite nicely once you've trim, trimmed off all the actual brick areas and the grip part fits nicely into the top. So using my plastic cutters I'm literally just cutting the plastic down on the Lego bit to try and fit into the bottom. Using my Dremel just to knead it up, give myself a little bit of extra space and room so it fits in. So as you can see, the top part isn't going to fit in there perfectly, but it will click in so I can then use the figure and turn it once it's connected to the ball. So, I realised that the bar joint is not going to be enough to hold it in place, so I'm cutting a small piece of the Lego brick and I'm going to drop that in between the leg joints to give the little bar on the ball joint a little area to grip onto. So trimming that down so I can then glue it into the bottom of the figure and then the bar joint will then stick to that and give it something to hold on to. So there you go, that fits in nicely into the inside of the crutch. Just with a pair of tweezers, positioning that in and then adding a little bit of glue. Key thing with this is patience because you've got to let it dry before you continue or you're going to end up getting glue onto the legs and they won't move and you don't want to do that. So just be very careful when you're putting this in. I 
and it's just a case of leaving it to dry. So that's had some time to dry now. So what I want to do is take the bottom part that I trimmed off where I'd left the little bar and I'm now going to attach that to the new piece that I've glued in. Looking at it, I've realized the bars are just a little bit too big. So now I need to just trim them down so it fits. Because I've got the larger piece of Lego inside the figure, I don't need so much of the bar space. So there we go, that will stick in there and then that will be fine and that will be strong enough to hold the top. Doing it with it all pieced together so I can position it into the correct position. I put a bit of glue on that, just make sure a little bit of extra off. Too much glue, don't want to get it on the legs. And then I need to just hold that in place for a few seconds just to let it tack off. So that's had some time to dry off now. So I should be able to just pop the top off and the ball joint should be firmly secured to the bottom of the figure. So just to make sure that it's extra welded in, should have shares in this company, I'm going to use some plastic weld and just paint that onto the Lego and the figure to make it bond. Just a little bit of extra strength. Last thing I want to do is when I'm twisting my IG-11 is for the body to pop off and I'll leave that to dry off. So our next thing to do is I want to then trim this piece of Lego down to then fit into the torso. So again, this is literally cut, trim, try it, cut, trim, try it, keep going. So it is a very tight fit, so using my Dremel, I'm literally just going to create a little circular area within there so it can just fit in a bit more snugly and I can get a bit of glue in there. Again, just trimming off the end pieces because they're just going to get in the way. Give that a really good push down. So there we go. It's in there. It fits. Here we are. You see where the ball joint's going to go. There we go. It's on. I could leave it like that because it is a tight fit. Pull it. There you go. It's come away from the body. And now a little bit of plastic weld. Drip it down into the figure, making sure don't let it run all the way down into the arms or the arms aren't going to move. So I'll leave them both to dry for quite a while. They've had ample time now. They have been there for a good few hours. So I don't want them to be red on the figure, so I could paint them, I can use enamel. Um, however, it's such a small area, I'm literally just going to use one of these metallic pens. Don't worry about the silver being too much, because once it's all hidden, you're not really going to see it, it just detracts from it being red. So I've actually dripped some into my tray, and then I'm going to use a paintbrush, and basically use it like silver paint. And I'm just going to give it a good coating on the inside. It looks far too bright to be part of the figure, but trust me, once it's on, once you've painted it, once you've given it coating, going further on, you won't notice. So what I'm doing here is with a little bit of a, a thinners, um, I'm actually just using that to get the silver paint off my brush. And then once you click that onto the ball joint, there we go, the figure turns perfectly. Super simple. You could do that amendment to the IG-88 and leave it as it is if you didn't want to make it the Mandalorian because it's actually quite a nice feature for it to turn at the waist. It's got a little bit of rocking left or right, backwards and forwards, but the good thing about it is it rotates. It's just an extra level of mobility to your figure. You've got different options here for adding the colouring. If you are into your pens, you could use a gold metal pen to colour in the rusty bits. Fine, looks a little bit too bright, a little bit too new. So the thing is, if you're going to use that, then get a little bit of a cloth, give a bit of a wipe before it dries, and then it, you get a more darker metal effect, which works quite nicely and doesn't look too bright. So for the colouring, I'm going to be using a couple of the Villaggio, uh, Valigio, you can never pronounce it, Valigio paints. So using a nice chocolate brown and an orange, I'm going to mix those together to create a little bit of uh, colouring to go onto the unit. You could go all metallic. I'm just going with a dark, rusty looking orange colour by mixing the brown and the orange together. If you're into your washes, you could use a wash. I'm going to do a little bit of a wash later on just to go over the whole figure to give it a little bit more of an aged look. And then there's key elements on the body that are 
different colours on the IG11 model. So it's just finding those areas, using pictures on the internet, identifying them and just giving them paint. And there's various different panels, there's bits on the arms, the top of the arms, a little bit on the legs. So what I'm doing now, I'm using a little bit of the paint from my silver paint, adding a bit of brown and the orange to give me more of a rusty, dirty colour and then using a dry brush just to spread some of the paint out to thin it in areas so it doesn't look as dense. And then what I'm doing is I'm using the dry brush with the paint and just going all over the figure really, really, really loosely just to help add some colour but a bit of depth just so it doesn't look like IG-88 and looks more like the Mandalorian figure. And I think you see it starts to look a little bit different. So using a bit of orange and a bit of brown again Add the detailing into the arms and the legs, a bit on the panel. Not a great deal of painting to do on this figure. And then leave him to dry. So he's had some time to dry off. There are holes in the figure. So I thought, I'll use my drill and I will drill through. But be very careful while doing this because what happened was, as I was drilling, grab the other side, pulled itself through and one of the holes went a bit wonky. Then what I did is I got some plastic weld put that around the holes, helped smoothed it off and then I just used my stunning knife and tweezers just to help flatten out some of the plastic and as you can see it just looks a bit more like IG-11 where it has the actual physical holes in the head so the hands are quite good for holding blasters not necessarily the blasters that it originally got but these are blasters that are from the other IG units that I've got and the guns are, are good duplicates almost like uh, the, the the guns that the IG-11 has in the Mandalorian so you can see holding the guns works brilliantly so of course any IG-11 unit wouldn't be complete without bandoliers my first thought was to make these using cable ties I curved them I glued them I put them on and I just kept looking at it going, that really isn't working, it doesn't, doesn't look right, I need to find something else. I took them off and then thought, elastic band. Cable ties rubbish, elastic band will be perfect. Painting the elastic band would be a bit nuts, you could do it, however I'm going to give it a wash later, but my first thought, well, an elastic band super absorbent so I'm going to use a sharpie on it. So I covered the elastic band in a brown sharpie. It isn't the most even texture but it starts to look a bit like leather. Then I left it to dry. Apart from getting sharpie all over my fingers and taking a few days to come off you can see the bandolier starts to look a little bit more genuine. So with my scalpel cutting the bandolier into a strip, glue a little piece down to the back of the figure. So a tiny little bit of glue on the back, I don't need a lot. And then I'm trying to glue it where it's going to cross over so you can't actually see any joints. Stick a little bit on the shoulder, a little bit on the back, leave it to dry. Then once you create the loop, you've made it connect, a little bit flat around the side of the body and then cut it and then started on the other side which was then going from the loop at the front sticking it to the figure, leaving it, going around the body gluing it, tucking in the end piece so it goes again under the bandolier at the front so you can't really see, trimming it off and there you go, there's my bandolier far more effective than using the cable ties and it doesn't matter which way the figure turns, it looks good one thing I'm going to do at some point is make a set of bandoliers and put them up in my new shop which is why I've not released a video for a while. Um, I did record this quite some time ago, it's just I've been working on getting uh, customising items into my shop so this is why there's been a bit of a delay. For the bandolier you need the little boxes, almost like Chewbacca ammunition packs. So what I thought about doing is this is where a cable tie will come in handy and using my standing knife slash scalpel I'm cutting off small square parts there's about five of these that go down the front of both sides so then what I did is with the very fine pieces I stuck a little bit of super glue 
onto the rubber elastic band and then pick the pieces up with my scalpel and position them on slightly spaced apart. Not perfectly even but looks a bit more natural. So I'll leave that to dry off because the super glue is on the front of the elastic band. Then what I decided was because of the unevenness of the actual bandolier a little bit of paint would help make it look a little bit more even and neater. So now it's all dried, cover it with a bit of paint and even went over the pieces of plastic that I've glued on just to fill in all the gaps. Painted the edges, making sure not to get some on the figure. But then I thought, yep, yeah, that's the right decision. That looks better. Now at this point, I didn't have any gloss. I ran out. So here I'm just using a bit of super glue on a crappy brush that I'm going to bin. And I'm using that to create the shine on over my paint. Make sure you leave it to dry off, don't touch it, and it will have a nice shine to it once it's dried. There you go, that's dried off. Looks a little bit more like leather now. It does look better with the paint coating. Next thing is my silver pen. Love these things, it just makes life so much easier when it comes to putting on emblems and belts on figures. And I'm just literally colouring in over the boxes. And there we go, my ammunition pads boxes are silver. And there is my final IG. Using the two guns that I got from the uh, IG unit that stood in the background arm in arm. His arms pop out, hold his legs and there we go we've got him. He can spin, position him in multiple positions the way he appears in the Mandalorian. So my IG-11 goes perfectly with my vintage Mandalorian and Cara Dune figure along with my Baby Yoda and Crib which came from ASIS film models who do an amazing version of the figure find their site and check them out I highly recommend them so I hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more in the future or suggest some potential future makes please subscribe what a piece of junk